All right, so for these next couple of videos, we're going to get into list views. So the way that I want to approach this is I want to take the Pizza Maker application that we just created for the uh, radio buttons and for the check boxes. And I want to modify that a little bit to actually use it with list views instead now. So to start off with, I'm going to go ahead and get the boilerplate for this program set up. And then we'll start going through uh, a little of the uh, particulars about uh, list views, at least on a, a introductory level so far. So we're going to start with an import. Or at the very least, we'll go ahead and get the uh, file itself set up. So for this one, I'm just going to make this uh, Pizza Maker 2 Java. So I'm just going to make a, either a uh, project or a program called Pizza Maker 2. We'll start doing all of our imports. So we're going to bring in the application class. We'll bring in the stage and the scene. We'll also go ahead and bring in a VBox layout. So I want to go ahead and create some list views and then have that label for the output at the very end. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and do it in the same general structure as what we had before. So we'll do import javafx.scene.layout.vbox. Uh, we'll then go ahead and bring in the list view and the label. So rather than using radio buttons or check boxes, we're just going to be using the list view. So it's essentially going to replace both of those. So we'll have our javafx.scene.control.listview. So this is where we're going to get the list view from, is this uh, list view class. We'll also bring in a label. And then we can go ahead and get started from here. So from here, we're going to go ahead and make the class header and then create the body. So it'll be public class pizza maker 2. This will again still extend the application class. We'll then go ahead and create our main method. So a public static void main or string or arguments. We'll call the launch method, pass in those arguments. I'm going to do public void start and then create the stage that we pass in for it. And then we can go ahead and start making our list views. So for this first part, where we do an introduction to the list view control, I want to first start by just focusing on the list view related to the uh, crusts. So we're just going to make one of those list views now. And then in the next video, I want to go through making the other list view for the toppings. So for this first one, we're going to create the list view. And then the next thing I need to do is somewhat similar to what we were doing for our event handlers, where I would specify the kind of event handler that we needed to create. Say, for example, an event handler specifically for action events. And I need to use that pair of angular brackets. And then I need to specify the type of the individual things that will go into this list view. So this list view is essentially going to be a collection of items. Uh, in some cases, a little bit later on, we'll see that we can make that a collection of controls. Uh, for now, what we're going to do is essentially a collection of data of some type. In this particular case, I want to do a list view of strings. So I'm going to put in a string right here. Okay. So this indicates that I want a list view of strings. Each one of these strings will, of course, be related to those uh, phrases that I used to indicate which kind of crust that we're picking from, or when we get into toppings, which kind of topping I want to pick from. So we'll go ahead and call this the crusts list view. And this is going to be equal to a new list view. And then right here, we'll do string again, specifying that this is going to be a list, uh, list view object that will consist of strings. We then want to make sure that we're calling the constructor methods. We'll have that pair of parentheses uh, after the specification that this is a string list view. The next thing I'm going to need is the label. So we're going to have our label for our output. It's going to be equal to a new label object. And we'll again give it that, uh, the first part of that string that we had before. So we'll say you have selected the plus the variable crust plus the word crust on the end. And since I'm going to be using a fairly similar approach to what I had in the previous, um, the previous set of uh, examples for radio buttons and check boxes, I know that with crust, I need to go ahead and make that a global variable. So we're going to go ahead and put that up here and say private string crust is going to be equal to traditional and by default. So we're going to have at least that much cover already. Okay. 
The next thing I want to go ahead and do is actually start adding the items to my list view. So as you can probably guess from this initial setup, uh, if we were to look at this list view right now, it would effectively be empty. So we want to start putting some of these strings into this list view. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and grab that list view. So we're going to say crusts list view. We'll have our dot notation. And then one of the methods I'm going to use on this list view is the get items method. And a lot like the get children method that we saw uh, near the end of our uh, introduction to the observable list interface back in the previous set of videos uh, related to uh, chapter 12 of the content I'm discussing. Uh, this get items method is also going to be used to get the observable list of all of the items related to this particular list view. So once I have that observable list, then I can start using a lot of those methods that I've uh, uh, talked a little bit about before. So we had things like add, add all, set, set all, uh, remove, and clear. So we went through those six methods. So the main method that I'm going to be concerned with here is going to be the add all method so that I can just add all of the items to this, uh, this list view. So in this particular case, the three items that I need are going to be those three strings, traditional crust, thin crust, and stuffed crust. All right. The next thing I want to go ahead and do is also make sure that I set up the dimensions in my list view. So by default, it will usually uh, just kind of stretch to fill out all of the space that's available to it. Uh, in a lot of cases, that's much larger than we would ever need it to be. So instead, what I can go ahead and do is just set some uh, preferred sizes for it, essentially a limit or a maximum for its uh, length or its width and height. So again, we're going to go ahead and get that crust list view. And then the method I'm going to call to do this is set pref size. And then I go ahead and specify, uh, similar to our scene, we're going to specify a width and then a height. So I'm going to do 100 by 80. Uh, one thing to note about this, because of the way this is going to be set up, this width uh, admittedly won't really matter that much because of the fact that the dimension of the scene, uh, the width that I'm going to set it to later, which will be 500, similar to what we had from the previous program, uh, that's effectively going to override this. The 80 is the number that I'm the most concerned with, basically just trying to fix the height of this list view to, uh, to that 80 pixels. Okay. And then the last thing I want to go ahead and do for my list view, uh, at least as far as this initial setup goes, is to specify uh, which one of these is going to be selected by default. So again, kind of like with the radio buttons, where I wanted to initially uh, indicate that the traditional crust radio button was selected. I also want to go ahead and make sure that the traditional crust item inside of my list view is selected by default, or at least when we initially run the application. So to do that, I need to, again, get my crust uh, list view, and then I need to go ahead and call a particular method that I'm going to have to be using uh, fairly often, which is get selection model, which effectively gives me access to a couple of different things in relation to um, being able to choose things that I want to select, uh, being able to get whatever is currently selected, uh, and also being able to specify um, something about event handling. Uh, so we'll see a little bit later a couple of different instances where I have to constantly be calling this get selection model method. Uh, in this particular case, we're going to do that. And then I need to call another method on that, which is going to be select first. So because of the fact that traditional crust is the first item in the list, this method is appropriate for this. In addition to select first, some other methods we could consider uh, include things like select last. If I were to use that, that would choose stuffed crust by default. There's also select all, which would just highlight or select all of these. Um, there's also things like select indices and select range, which allow you to specify particular items uh, within that list view. Okay. The next thing I want to go ahead and do is uh, set up the uh, VBox and the scene. So we'll go ahead and do my VBox. So we'll do a new VBox. And this V box, we'll go ahead and give this uh, another 10 pixels of spacing. And we'll have our crusts list view and our output. And then we'll go ahead and set up the scene. It's equal to a new scene with the V box as the root node. Give that 500 
by 200. So these are pretty effective dimensions uh, when we actually add all of the items to this. I'm just going to go ahead and use this 500 by 200 for this particular program. We'll then go ahead and set up our stage. So we'll set the scene to that scene object. We'll set the title. So this is going to be the second iteration of our pizza maker. So this is going to be the pizza maker 2.0. And then we'll go ahead and display that. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save it like this and run it, just so we can at least see the general layout. And then after that, we'll go ahead and start adding some functionality to this list view. So we'll go ahead and compile this. Oops. Okay, and then we'll run it. Okay, and then we can see our list view right here with traditional crust selected initially. We see our statement here, you have selected the traditional crust, but as I choose more items in this, by clicking through each one of these, you can see that the item I have selected is highlighted in that list view, but as of right now, since we have not actually included any functionality for this, every time I choose one of these, we don't see anything changing in that label. So the next thing I wanna go ahead and do is actually add our event handler for this. Okay. So coming back over here, right after I've gone ahead and set up the structure or the layout for my list view, the next thing I want to go ahead and do is actually create my event handler for that. Uh, based on the way that we're going to be approaching this, another way that we could describe that event handler is also what is known as an event listener. Essentially, it's something that just kind of sits there and listens for an event, and whenever it hears one, then it can go ahead and execute on some action that we've specified. So we need to go ahead and get the cross list view. We again need to get the selection model for this. We then want to go ahead and set up a uh, or uh, call another method, which is going to be selected item property. So essentially, we're going to add some kind of attribute or property to whichever item is being selected. And that property that we want to set up is going to be the listener. So we're going to add listener. And then the uh, content or the, the thing that goes into this uh, add listener is very similar to what we had to do whenever we did the set on action method, where we then needed to put in some new instance of a, uh, an event handler. So we're going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to do this as a Lambda expression. This uh, kind of gets me out of having to specify the uh, event handler or the action event classes. So we're going to do event. We'll go ahead and set up the body for this uh, event handler. And for this one, what I'm going to do is uh, get the index of the item that I'm selecting. So whenever I choose one of these items in this list, uh, say like traditional crust, this is going to be item zero, thin crust is item one, and stuffed crust is item two. So it's very similar to, uh, if you're familiar with arrays, uh, that uh, general setup where they have an index, so a position somewhere in the array, our list views have a similar structure to them. Okay, so we're gonna create an integer here. We're gonna call it index. This is gonna be equal to the crusts list view. I again need to use the get selection model. And then I need to actually get the index of uh, whatever it is that I've selected. So we're going to do get selected index. And this will actually give me the index or the position of the item that I've chosen in that list view. Okay. And then the last thing I need to go ahead and start setting up here is uh, the positioning for that. And then, or uh, checking the positioning of that. And then uh, modifying the text of my output based on whichever uh, item I have selected. So we're going to use some if statements to do this. So, so we'll say uh, if this index is equal to zero, meaning that traditional crust is selected. I want to make sure that my crust string is set to traditional. Otherwise, if the index is equal to one, say that the crust is equal to uh, thin, 
else if the index is equal to two, then we'll say the crust is stuffed. Okay. And then one additional thing to point out about this is that in addition to having indexes uh, zero, one, and two, if this was set up in such a way that none of the items uh, were selected, say maybe by default, I uh, don't use this select first, uh, the index that it would return whenever we check to see the selected index would actually end up being negative one. So that's something else to keep in mind about the uh, get selected index method. Okay. So then we'll go ahead and set up the output. I'm going to set the text of it to be you have selected the plus the crust variable crust. All right. So now that we've got this much, we'll go ahead and compile and run this again. So I'll compile that. We'll run it. See that our interface is still the same, and now if I choose one of these, it will show that we have selected the thin crust, the stuffed crust, and then I change it back to the beginning, and it's the traditional crust. All right. So at this point, this is going to wrap up the initial the sort of introductory discussion that I wanted to have about the list view class. In the next section, we're going to go into a little bit more detail with um, being able to choose the selection mode and uh, also introducing a couple of other things related to the list view class.